Okay, welcome to the one and only Bristol Channel. So we're up here today at Porlock Weir. Now, the trip hasn't gone to plan. We were up at three o'clock this morning. We went to the top end of the channel to a mark what I wanted to go to, but really, to uh, target the bigger size smooth hound. And uh, normally what I find this sort of time of year now, the, the, chat, the, the hounds do a, a cer certain type of circuit. Now, you'll see the odd one foot coming off the reefs and you'll see them start to show the well side. And when that happens, normally the top end of the channel normally sees a, the bigger fish turn up first. And um, you have, it, it gives you the chance of targeting the big ones without having to get all the smaller fish in with them, giving you more chance of pulling the big one out. Now we've got to the car park, which I used to park in at uh, five past four this morning. And unfortunately the car park is now closed to 10 o'clock, which is an absolute nightmare. So um, we were looking at places to park. We couldn't find anywhere to properly park where the van would be safe and not get tickets and stuff like that. So we've decided to drive another hour down to Minehead. And uh, we're just past Minehead, we're at a mark known Paulock Weir. Now, Paulock is um, it's an accessible mark for many anglers. I mean, it's got a lovely car park. Um, it's, the price has gone up over the years. Now, it was 12 quid for 12 hours or 15 quid for 24. So I thought, you know what, see how we get on here. We've got armed with crab. I mean, we've got probably 40 crab between us. Um, we've got squid, we've got bluey. We've got all bit, different bits and pieces, really, for a mixed bag. Um, Joseph is actually fishing the Shore League match this weekend. And as he's down, I thought, you know what, we need to try and get him out and see if we can get him into a fish at the same time as well. So, uh, yeah, we've come down to here. Now, it's a good it's good, good mark for a Shore League match, really. You've got, a, you've got a mixed bag of species. You can get all the rays here. You can get the congers, you can get the bullus, you can get the smooth hound. Normally, with the smooth hound, a double-figure fish is very possible. Um, I've, I've seen them up to around the £14 mark off this beach. Um, I know of anglers, and the biggest one I've seen come off was £15 something. So you've also got a chance of a decent hound. But um, it's very early, and uh, to be honest, I'd rather be further up channel, if I'm honest, targeting the big ones. But unfortunately, with the car park, there wasn't a safe place to pay, play, uh, get the van in. And uh, it was just, a, do you know what? It's a backup plan, what we were going to come to later on this evening. So, uh, as I said, it's not, you haven't got to walk a million miles. Car park's right over the back, back there now. Um, once you've paid and displayed, you've got the public toilets there. You take a short walk around the harbour and uh, it brings you on to a, into, onto like a pebble beach, really. Now, for anyone what's not, not struggling with distance casting, there's a couple of houses to the right-hand side when you walk across the bridge and you'll see like a groin coming down to the right. Anyone what's obviously struggling to get distance and get them onto this clean ground, the further you stay towards those houses, the better really. As you start to push up around the bay now, you, uh, you will need half decent cast the further you get around to get out onto the cleaner ground. But as I said, it, it, nine times out of 10, you get your gear back. I mean, I'm gonna fish uh, fixed leads today. I'm not gonna bother with rotten bottoms. I mean, it's, uh, it's pebbly beaches and that. You can get snagged close in, um, but nine times out of 10, you keep your lead high and uh, you will get your, your gear back. But uh, fantastic sea. We've got a low, very low southwesterly breeze, uh, turning westerly as the day goes on and a completely flat sea. But as you can see behind me, the sea, the sea sort of like come around for you where the tide comes around this point. Now, it's, it's just gone low water at the moment. It's not a massive spring, but the tide's starting to drop back down now. But uh, it's a good enough tide. I can see the smut starting to come around into here now and starting to target our peeler crab baits. Now, I've got two lots of um, rigs made up today. I've got the smaller size, what I'm going to use here later on. 
what I planned to, and I, the, where we were going earlier on, I've got some bigger sort of sizes. Um, the reason being, if I, I wanted to target a 20 pound smut today, and um, I've got bigger hooks, preferably for targeting that, that, that fish. Now down here, I know really, you don't want those big hooks. You want a smaller size hook, and you want smaller scale down baits. And uh, you're just getting some fantastic sport. I mean, the average sort of stamp of fish, smooth and wise, would be between seven to nine pound, I would, I would say. Um, you would get the odd smaller one in between and stuff, but normal average sort of stamp, seven to nine pound. Um, always chance with a double. And uh, it is a very good mark for a mixed bag. As I said, you get the blondes here, you get the, the bullets here, you get the, the congas here. I've had the cod here, bass here. It's, um, it's a mark which many years ago, uh, when I first started fishing the Bristol Channel around these areas, what we come down to, to have a good day's fishing. And uh, Joseph's just down now wetting his line up. And uh, we, I'm gonna get the rod set up now. And uh, hopefully we're gonna in for a good day's fishing. Finally, the rain has stopped. <laughs> Finally. It's, uh, it's been a nightmare, guys, isn't it, with the rain? I mean, it done it the other year, didn't it, when it's just uh, January, February and March was just really wet. But um, I'm hoping we could be in for a good couple of months with some nice weather. So uh, I had someone ask me the other day regarding the tripod. And uh, I'll go through it now. So this is an Ian Gold's tripod, OK? Um, I've got an additional one. Basically, if I ever go down and I'm fishing one rod for gilts or anything like that, or any fair I'm fishing one rod, I've got one set up in the middle of a cup. So like, even if I'm up fishing the European Open and stuff like that with one rod, I've got one in the centre where I can use. And um, I like these, cu these cups, I buy them separately because it just holds my leads in. Obviously I've got the uh, iMac, uh, IMAX uh, mesh net, just for your baits and bits and pieces like that, just keep it off the floor, get, especially where we are now. I mean, you put your keys down or something, they're lost. I mean, you put bait elastic or anything down here um, and you put it in the net, you know what it is at all times. I've got the leg lock kit for it. And uh, it's just, to be honest, sometimes up here, not necessarily this mark here, but a lot of the other ones where I'm with boulders and fishing with boulders and stuff like white mark and grenadine and stuff like that, I will use two tripods for the simple fact that I can put a tripod there and then basically move my rods onto it. And it saves me having to muck around trying to move backwards and forwards. It just helps me. I mean, Joseph's got a bomb lead now and uh, he's got it caught, caught in. You've got to keep those leads up here. And um, I've, I have seen people get snagged up. I don't, he's got it straight back out now because it's bomb lead, but you, you do need to keep that lead up high and just trying to get it away from the rougher ground because there is odd packs of mixed ground. And as you can see, some of the size of the pebbles in front of me, they do get quite larger as it goes on. And um, the last thing you want to do is get a fish on and get your legs, legs, legs stuck in behind it. But um, yeah, so T9s today, guys. T9s. And uh, yeah, I was excited. I was. I was, I was actually thinking, I've been waiting all week and I was looking at the weather and I was thinking, do you know what? And I guarantee it, there'll be some big smuts pulled out today further up the channel. I've, I've got a good feeling about it. But unfortunately, where I wanted to go, it was um, because of the tides and that, we had to wait for other marks and that. And I said to Joseph, I'm not going to muck around. We, you know what I mean? We've got up at three o'clock in the morning. We just want to go and get some fish out, don't we? So we've come down to Porlock. But uh, knowing my luck, that's what will happen. But um, yeah. I'd like to say thank you for all the nice comments we've had come into the channel. Uh, everyone seems to be enjoying the longer content videos, which is very good. And uh, to be honest, I've been, I've been enjoying doing them. It's been nice getting out and about and, and bits and pieces like that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, trying something new all the time and doing different things. I mean, the, the Bristol Channel videos always go down quite well. There he is. First one. Let's get the next one on the go. The sun's supposed to be out a bit later on, which I am quite looking forward to. Yep.
pop that right in now, aren't I? Right. So, time to get set up. Go for the baits in a minute, pack lunch. Check these out. So, just got some new baiting towels. The England Adventures uh, baiting towels made up. They're quite nice, actually. They're quite dear, but they are very nice. So, what am I going to do here? Put that one down here for the minute. Caps there. First thing we've got is a sling. We definitely got a, need a sling today for weighing the pounds. Uh, rig wallet. Bag of leads. Go through this a bit more in a minute. Got a spare top there just in case I need it later on. Um, and then I've got my two little tackle bait bags with uh, bait elastic and stuff. And I'm using uh, my Fathom 15s magged. 20 pound main line, more than enough from where I are. As I said, I've got rotten bottoms on if I need them. And uh, I'm using the Century T900s. Glass tip, lovely for hounds. So we'll get these set up quickly and then we will uh, get some rigs on the go. So what I will do here, where I am now, is I'm, uh, I'll set both of them up now with bomb leads just to get a cast out. So I know then when I'm hitting my uh, when I'm, I'm hitting my other ones out, they're uh, they're gonna fly. So that's that one there done. Bring that one in. I've been on a bit of a fishing spending spree this week. I uh, last year when I went, I started playing a little bit of golf. And uh, I went through my fishing gear. And at the end of the day, you can't have it all, can you? And uh, I sort of like scaled down anything I needed and didn't need. And uh, I think I went a bit OTT. And uh, I'm terrible for it. Absolutely terrible. I mean, um, I had 12 uh, Dawa SHA30s uh, and SHV, well, the two of them, yeah, lots of different types. And I had six with 20 pound main line and six with 25 main line. So if I was going North Devon, I got six reels for that. If I've gone like Bremen or anywhere else where I need a 20 pound line, I got reels for that. And um, what I find is me and Joe's having a conversation and he, he says, I'll just change line. But the trouble is I find, especially when you want to go out fishing all the time and stuff like that, being prepared makes a difference. Because if you fish, if you finish work and uh, you want to go fishing, by the time you go and you think, oh, I need to change my line, I need to make rigs and that, it just puts you off. You think, oh, I ain't got time for that. Where if you've got everything in place and ready to go, it's no, there's, no, um, there's nothing holding you back. And I, and I, and I find it, 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 it gets me out a lot. And so what I normally do is if I'm sitting watching a film on a weekend or not, I mean, or in an evening or something like that, I'll make rigs. So um, I'll, get, I'll have all my rigs ready. So I've got all my Ray rigs ready, all my... Um, uh, smooth arm rigs ready, all my formbacks, all my sole rigs, all my bremen rigs, and I'll just keep them in rig wallets and that. And at the end of the day, all I've got to do, if I'm going to go and have to work, is grab the rig wallet, of whatever rig wallet I need, chuck it in a bag with my reels and that, and, I'll, and off I go. And um, I just find being prepared enables me to get out fishing more. And uh, yeah, he was taking the mick out of me. He was saying, why do you need so many reels and stuff? And I was like... Well, just it's, they're there, aren't they? If I need, if I want to go and do that, maybe a bit OTT, but it is what it is. Right, I'm going to come down to the water now. I'm going to cast these two out, wet the lines, and uh, then we'll get some baits on the go, then, guys.
get some baits on these now. So to be honest, I'm not worried about it because once the lines are wet from the, at the moment down here, you, you obviously when you get back there later on, you're going to be hammering the baits out as far as you can go. But at the moment, you only need probably a 50 or 60 yards cast. But um, no, I have got one flat lead, as, a, as, a, as you can see there now, look like at that. <laughs> but uh, no, lovely day for it. So on the right hand side over the back there, if you can see the headland there, that's Bossington Beach, what goes around there. And um, it's actually the same, a bit more rougher ground, really, a bit more snaggy is probably the best way to say. It's very similar, but is slightly bigger, but um, it's, it can be quite snaggy in, on parts over there. But on the back there, then you've got Paul, um, you've got um, Holston Point, and then you've got the main headland that walks right around the coastal path then, all the way around there towards Minehead. And you've got obviously Selworthy Sands over the back there. So it's, um, it's another, some of you will obviously watch some of the videos we've done over the, over the years down there. Very, very good rain mark. And um, it's uh, for fitness levels, you need, to, you need to have a bit of fitness. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very long walk, um, involves a very, like, um, decline with, um, with ropes. There's a rope set up and stuff like that. Um, and it can be it can be quite dangerous if I'm, if I'm honest. Very slippy uh, feet and um, rocks and stuff under feet, and definitely you need studs and waders and stuff like that over there. Well, I used to take a pair of waders on my back, walking uh, walking my uh, walking boots, and when I got over there, get my studded waders on to go over the rocks because it can be like sheets of glass and that over there. But um, it can produce some very good fish and stuff. But uh, for those that want to want to uh, take the walks, <laughs> let's get this one out then. Okay. So we'll go for the rigs first, I think. We'll make some room here. So I've got my rig wallet there set up now, okay? Um, I've, got, um, I've got some old soul rigs in there what I've got made up because I thought I might go further up channel. I did forgot to bring a black. So then I've got some um, pulley rigs made up for what I use for um, smooth arm fishing. Rotten bottomed, smaller size there with a circle work and a three on the bottom. And then I've got a uh, four or five O hooks on the on there with a four O um, circle on the tops, but a acting as a snail knot. Now I'll go through this in a minute, guys. Now I know a lot of guys over the last few years have been, especially last twelve months originally, have gone been going and sending me messages now. What well, I thought of the sn of the dongle rig. Now I'm not a fan, if I'm honest. It's um, I think it's more of a, a face, and uh, it's no different than what I've been doing for many years with my rigs if I'm honest with you. And um, I was talking to my mate Gavin about it the other day, because instead of having the braid, which your bait gets attached to, this is all this rig is, okay? Um, it, it's a very good uh, rig for targeting smooth out because it's a fixed knot. And uh, if tied correctly, the good thing about it is when you've got your bottom hook like that, your bottom hook will sit down on the bed with your bait on, and that will be sat upwards. So as a smooth hound comes in to go like that, the circle goes right into its mouth. And uh, as I said, that's basically your dongle, guys, except from you haven't got to muck around with silly little things. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic, it's fa fantastic setup. And uh, I've, to be honest, I've never had the issue of missing bites with smooth hounds with, with using it. It's, um, it, it, is, it is what it is at the end of the day. I know the, the dongle rigs sort of like come from like freshwater, sort of like carp fishing and stuff like that methods, but it's, it's, that's a sea, a sea version of it, except from instead of using a bit of braid and, a, and a, like a clip to hold off the end, you've got an extra hook. So uh, the good thing about that is if you get a hound what misses the top hook, You've got, a, you've got the back of it goes to come out of its mouth. You've got an extra hook there. So it's one I've been using for many years. I know a lot of anglers and good anglers will use exactly the same methods for it. And, uh, and it works. So for me, really, I don't see the, the bonus from, from going the dongle way because that is all you need. See that top circle there? It's deadly, absolutely deadly. And then you've got the bottom one there on that acting with a snail knot. Now, uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube of the snail knot. I'll, I'll see if I can do one later on in the video. If not, um, it might be something I'll do on the Facebook page. If you want to see the snail knot, send a message into the Facebook page and uh, I'll see if I can get one set up on there for you. But it's, it's really easy to do. You tie your first knot on, you bring it down through the eye, uh, you fold it back on itself, go around eight times, bring it back up through the eye and pull tight and that's it. And the good thing about it, it can set. So you imagine the crab bait's there, that's the top of the crab bait. And if it's lying like that on the seabed, it's just bang pick up straight away but that's what I like to use guys um, lots of different people will use different methods and stuff like that uh, I just find it works there's no point in changing it 
So I'm going to use a seven ounce lead here today, just because of the way that tide looks like it's coming through. Okay, so I've got these from Seacast, the seven ounce um, Namix. I don't play around too much. I mean, it's going to uh, it's going to be where it is. I just literally turn my leads up like so. A lot of people always play around with pliers and that. I'm not really that fussy. I mean, that gripped in anyway is going to do the job. I mean, if these are turned over correctly like that, it's um, it's going to do the do the job anyway. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't see them point most of the time. Um, so that goes through there like that. That pulls through. So I am going to fish a rotten bottom on this one, and then I'm going to basically pull the line down through like that onto the lead. I've got two knots in there. So normally, if I'm fishing really snaggy, snaggy ground. I'll fish with three knots in in the in the in that, but I've got two knots in now, and I find I can notice the difference between having one knot, two knots, and three knots. And uh, sometimes that one knot won't do it. Having the two knots gives you a little, a little bit more tension. Having three, it just makes makes it go. So uh, that's that. So I'm going to get the scissors out now. Okay. So we'll trip off, stem off the edge like so. them down in there like that. So these are rotten bottom um, release clips from uh, Breakaway, uh, Gemini. Breakaway doing a similar version. I, I do like the Gemini versions, I've got to be honest, they are my favourite release clip. I've got an imp just behind that then. 100 pound mono, a rubber bead, proper pulley from uh, Breakaway. 100 pound Gemini swivel link and then I've got um, Oxima um, 80 pound there then with a circle on the top and a chinny on the bottom. Job done. So the good thing about that now, I can literally get my dead lead. <laughs> like it's killed the, it's actually killed the bracket as well on it, which isn't good. I have to replace that now. So that there is literally ready for baiting up now. So what I'm gonna do because of the tide, we've got a little bit of time. I like quite half tied up, really. I'm going to um, literally just uh, get my other one set up. I won't bore you with the same thing over and over again. And then what I'll do then is we'll get me baiting it up then and showing you the, the process of how I like to bait up. I mean, nine times out of 10, most of you already know it. Um, it's more so for the guys who are obviously starting off and to help everybody at the same time. But hopefully we can see a few smooth out of, out of here today. So, I said, got some uh, hooker baits, bluey, got some squid, and we've got some crab in there as well. So, um, what I'm intending to do is use the old crab up first. That smells like the old crab, I think. I think that's the new stuff. That's the new stuff. Lovely. So, as you can see, so what we use is peeler crab, okay? It can be quite expensive, but at the same time, it's what you need need for smooth hand fishing, really. And uh, I would definitely use a bait and towel. And then what I tend to do is, I don't muck around with the, the claws and stuff. I tend to just take the claws straight off, okay, like so. And then what I tend to do then is crack the top of the crab, okay. Some people do these differently, I know because I remember many years ago, Nick Panther went to Wales, he couldn't get peeler crab. He went to fish a mock called Aberfour, and uh, the only thing he could, could get was hardbacks, and he took hardbacks with him, and they had them. Um, exactly the same, they're not telling if it's a peeler crab or not, they're literally just smashing it. And um, I tend to just take it all off anyway, if I'm honest, because it gives it a nice, nice um, soft bait more than anything. But I don't play around a lot with it, as you can see. I simply get on the back like that. I don't de-lung it or nothing because they're not de-lunging them out there. I just literally cut a little bit in the crab like so. And what I tend to do here now is I'll manipulate it and, build, and put it into shape with my hands first. So um, I'm fishing like a mini cod bread bait, but this one here is specifically out there for a big fish. Um, so I've got the big hooks on this one. I'm fishing smaller ones as well, but I do want to, at the end of the day, my, my plan of attack was to go out there and target a 20 today. And uh, 
I'm not sure I'm going to get a 20 where I am, but you look at that backdrop out there, I don't know if you can see it in a minute, sun's coming through the clouds out there in a minute. I'm hoping we're going to be in for a good day. So that there is the wrong one. So that's a smaller hook set up. And uh, yeah, so this one's a bigger hook set up. So basically all I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take the crab and I'm going to come down through the bottom like so, and I'm going to make sure that hook is proud. That's all I need to do is make sure that hook point is proud, okay? And then I'm going to basically bring it around the, uh, the crab like so. Feed him around. Try not to go all over your rod. <laughs> okay, and then bring him up like that. If you notice, the snow knock top hook isn't even playing yet. So this is what the, the dongle part would act like, basically, guys. Except from you've got a hook on the bottom. And I, I feel that the hook is really important because I've had it before where I've, got, I've hooked the helm with the bottom hook. And I mean, if you've um, not got that bottom hook, but as I said, a lot of people will say different things. Half the time, I feel that it's just something what's been made up just for a sales speech, really. And i um, not saying that they don't work because they, pro they probably do work. I'm not really one to try that sort of thing. But I think more than anything, if something's working, why change it? And I mean, most of the guys what I know who fish for smooth hounds will fish it like that, okay? And that is, and that is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. You've got a top hook there straight away. So if a the fish comes over like that, it's going to get hooked straight up in the top. And then you've got a hook point at the bottom as well, okay? If you want to be really fussy, I could trim this slightly over the side there like that, right? And then what I would do, this bait elastic I've got here is quite soft. Okay, so all I'm going to do is going to wrap it around there like that now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my crab bait, okay? So that one there set right up. Mushy, horrible crab hands. And uh, yeah, that one there's done. So the, the smaller one of the two, I, I'll do exactly the same again, really, but I'll look for a smaller crab. Like that sort of size. Exactly the same. I'll... Uh, take him off these crab are a week old they've been in my freezer i've got one of those american fridge freezers and they're because of the, the temperatures they keep they keep them absolutely sound sometimes it can be an absolute nightmare to get hold of peter crab and um, i'm quite fortunate and alert enough i've got a local tackle shop to me who um he look after me really tackle tackle trader newton abbott and i'll ring him up i'll, I'll make a put an order in um, and uh, if they can fulfill the order, they always do. If they can't get the crab in, sometimes they can't due to rain and stuff, they always give me a ring. But definitely, guys, if you're in the, in the Newton Abbott area, in the, the Timmouth area, Torquay area, around the exit area and stuff, really good shop, especially if you're course angling and stuff like that. Fantastic carp session, uh, section and that and sea section as well. So uh, it caters for all types of fishing, really. But they're good as gold in there. Definitely worth going in and seeing them. They do look, try to look after you. Um, so that's with the bait there then. So I'm going to do exactly the same with this one, just a smaller size version. And then I'll, uh, I'll basically bring that around. You, are, you will hear a few beeps. Joseph is into his first fish. If you want to bring him over. So Joseph's got a head camera today as well. And uh, he's got his first fish of the day, which took a crab. And unfortunately, we don't want to see these guys. So that is a baby dogfish, and that is a miniature. Look at that. Absolutely miniature, tiny. But um, I've seen small eyes that size up here and spotted. It's crazy, really. But uh, you get him unhooked and get him uh, back. But probably the smallest one you've ever had, isn't it? Yeah, it's close. <laughs> but um, yeah, we've got this crab bait in anyway. So it tends to like, just give him a quick squeeze just to get the juices sort of like going. And then uh, exactly the same here again now. I can bring that bottom hook down like so. So I'll put that in the bottom of the crab, come out through like that. Making sure the uh, the hook point's proud. I mean, that hook point has got to be proud. Okay. Bring him round. And then what I'll do is bring that top hook straight down through. So I try to manipulate the hooks so that it will sit properly. So that's sitting on the side now. So when that sits down like that, okay, that'll go like that. I've got a chance of the hook up there. Oh, I'm not happy with that hook. That's it. I'm going to come through like that, I think. That's it. I'm going to come through like that. So if I pull that hook there through the top of the crab, 
There he is, that's sitting better. That's, that's sitting lovely now. Yep, lovely, that's set nice. So, that's my second bait. If I can get him around to show you. Yep. That's my second bait up there now. A bit smaller than the other, okay? But um, as you can see, top hook gear, bottom hook gear, and that's all you need. So the only thing what's left to do now is uh, basically get these two casted out. The tide's pro 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 probably half this distance from where I've set up again. So um, I'm probably going to move back slightly and then uh, we'll get one flying out and hopefully we can see a smooth hound on it. So, reel that up slightly. I'll set everything up now. So I bring my rotten bottom right up to the top so I know it will release. Okay, and I'll bring my crab bait down and I'll stick him right in behind the imp. Bring it up to the top like that. I know that's coming straight off then when I'm casting. It's not going to come off when I cast, but when, I, when it lands, that's guaranteed to pop up then. And uh, all it is the case now is uh, hitting him out. So let's go. Tide moving left hard. So we hit right, yeah? That's the first one out. Joe said to me a minute ago, he went with that last cast he'd done. Ty's swinging round hard left at the minute. So uh, we want it to uh, hold bottom slightly. Lovely. I don't know why it's swinging hard right. Ah, it's coming around slightly, he'd be right. So one important thing when you're smooth hound fishing, drag, okay? Tighten up your drag on your line, release it. So you need to have all tension in the line. The glass tips are lovely for it. Then I'm gonna set the ratchets, okay? I'm gonna, not gonna set them real loose. That can make the difference. It's too much pressure, too much restriction when the hound hits. Set it properly, and that there's enough tension for it to take, but enough tension for the hook to set properly at the same time, okay? But um, mine's sort of stayed where it is at the minute, which is good. So I've got, the, I've got the first big bait out there. I know that now, if a fish comes along, and takes that, it's going to allow it to take line. Very important here. Now, a mate of mine, don't know if he's watching this, yeah, Louis, I know him as, used to work with him in Exeter many years ago. Very good angler over the years. I don't know if he does a lot anymore, but he used to love his fishing. And uh, he was up here one day and he was fishing a fixed ball and a multiplier. And uh, he got a smooth hound on, on his, um, on his multiplier. And as he'd done it, he forgot to loosen the drag on his fixed ball. And he got a smooth hound come along and actually take his rod into the water the only reason he got it back because he was literally near enough re reeled in with his multiplier he cast out and managed to hook the lead first time over the bell arm of the fixed ball brought it back in released the fixed ball drags that allowed the fish to take off got the hook uh, weight off the off the reel and uh, started gaining line on the on the and fighting the fish what was on as well and uh, he, don't forget his mates unhooking the other rod now and uh, I, think he, I think it was around 14 or 15 pound. He had a PB smooth hound on, on there, but it literally took him straight into the, his rod straight into the water. I know anglers have lost their rod from doing it, guys. Any type of big fish fishing, it's a no brainer. Set your drags, set the ratchets. But uh, I'm going to get the other one out now. So that's my first one set up. He's out, ready to rock and roll. So this is the uh, line I wet up earlier. And uh, exactly the same again, really is um, it's a case of clip, clipping the, the crab bait down, like so, okay? And to set in that lead accordingly, the rotten bottom on it, on the uh, Gemini rotten bottom clip. But that is, that is it, guys. I mean, it's easy as you like. 
yeah, the most expensive part of it is the peeler crab. I, I do agree with you. I mean, the cost of peeler crab, over, what they've gone up over the years now, is is, is crazy. But uh, sometimes people up north and that are paying, paying over a pound a crab. But at the same time, it's a bait which I wouldn't want to live without, especially for targeting um, species like smooth elm. But I'm going to go walk down to the water's edge now, and hopefully we can uh, we can see a fish out. Okay, folks, so that one there, it outs the right there now. They are starting to pull around slightly, not too much, but uh, see if we can get fish out on this one now. Breathtaking, isn't it? Absolutely unreal. What a sight. Very cloudy over, sun beaming down over Bossington there now, and uh, it just makes you feel alive at times, it really does. I mean, as I was saying to a friend of mine the other day, if I go fishing once a week, I feel, I feel, I feel like a different person. I feel like relaxed and, and I think it's something for me personally I need to do because it's my sort of like getaway from life for even if it's for a couple of hours. And I think everybody needs it. Everybody's got their form of getting away from everything and just that's their time. And uh, this is it. This is it for me, unfortunately. I've tried different things throughout the years and for something or other, it's, it's something to do with the sea, the surroundings and... Um, pulling a few fish in <laughs> but the first next thing I'm going to do is uh, get everything I've got a packed lunch here we'll go for my little packed lunch a bit later on eh? but I'm just going to try and um, get everything put away here properly now so uh, I haven't got stuff out what I will do is um, I, I tend to fish four rigs basically so what I tend to do there now is I've got my I've got a big rig which I'll stick stick in the there and I've got another small rig so what that does and that's the joy of having it already is I can bait a, I can bait one up now while I'm waiting and then when I when I bring that in even if I've got a fish on I can clip it straight on send him straight out you know what I mean so uh, that one there yeah they're both held which is good both held so I'm going to put them both all in the uh, in the net. I mean, those IMAX nets, cheapest chips if you can get hold of them. And uh, they were a nightmare to get hold of at one stage. I've got, I bought three of them it's just so I've got them on for my different tripods and that. Um, but they're very handy, just not stop you losing stuff really. So yeah, I'll put everything back in here now. It's all set in there. Cool bag, leads. So what I normally do with the leads, I put them in the bag here. Just wait, wait to tripod down, and um, I've got them there if I need them. I mean, the rotten bottom line, what I've got. And I've got a pet, uh, uh, big bulk spool of old twenty pound F one. What I, I use for it. I mean, it's a bit brittle now because I've had it so long and stuff. And uh, it's just perfect for um, rotten bottom release clips, really. I got a wire trace in there. I was going to have a go for a big bass today shock leader bait elastic a couple of spare hooks that's all i need um not loads and loads of gear i don't really need it like that but um yeah that's all that in there now so the main thing is everything's packed well, as that tide starts to flood now i can just stop making my way up i mean the top of the bank we'll be fishing up there later on over the high water um it, i prefer it a little bit really it's, when you're up here now, it just it makes your lines like drop. But when the water starts getting a good depth, it sort of like hits the water and then it goes off, goes off properly. But um, yeah, I'll probably fish it until it gets to really roughly where I am now. And then uh, I'll head back up at the top and set up ready for the incoming tide. So we've got high water around 11 o'clock. 
And uh, as I said, it's not a massive tide, but it's still a good spring tide. And uh, yeah, hopefully, say spring, it's not, I wouldn't say it's massive. Um, it's sort of like medium, medium tides. Joseph's fixed. He's got his, uh, he's got his fishing head on now. He wants a three and a half pointer today. He's fishing a, his club um, match. He's got like a, a shore league event and uh, he wants to try and get one out. I mean, we've been working hard all week and I mean, it's been, it's been a nightmare with this weather, but uh, we've been, we've done well, done well. And uh, took the weekend off to go fishing. <laughs> so hopefully see these be rods bending over and seeing a few rounds on them, eh? So, Starting to get bites now on the big rod. <laughs> it's like, look like doggy bites, really. I'm really hoping not because there's lovely fresh crab on that then. But as I said, it could be smaller hounds. I mean, that one there, the hooks are quite big. And um, if I start getting big knocking bites, I know start scaling down with the, with the smaller hooks. You're caught in between it sometimes because for me, you want to go and target like a big 20 pound fish. It's going to have a bigger mouth than a 10 pound fish, isn't it? So the likelihood of like, for me personally, I could like a bigger, bigger style hook, a stronger style hook. Um, not to say you can't catch fish, big fish on small hooks because you can, but it's just out of preference really. Because I go, I normally hook, I go to the size of my bait size to my hook. And with, a, with going with like a bigger crab bait, I like a slightly bigger hook. But um, as I said, it, I, could, I could end up missing out on fish because of that. But exactly the same as I said to Joseph today, we could have gone up and we could have blanked on Evermarks just on that simple fact that you want to try for that one decent fish. But the likelihood of getting it sometimes is very slim, you know what I mean? But you, um, you've always got it in your head. I think it's the difference between specimen fishing and just like going out and enjoying fishing. And I said to jo Joseph a little bit, because I used to love coming down here years ago. I mean, if I, if I, you know I mean, you're in for a good day's fishing, get a bit of pat lunch, you're out for the day. I mean, sometimes we do like three or four tides on here over the weekend. And uh, it'd be a good laugh, like, right, you know what I mean? It's a few, few fish, sometimes not massive fish, you, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about getting out fishing, isn't it? I think that was a smaller hound or a dogfish. It stopped now, it was proper bouncing over. Oh, well. To bring it back in in a minute, to see, uh, get a bait change. Maybe put sm two smaller hooks on for a minute, just to see if we can get a few, few fish out, and then uh, and then go from there. Really, enjoy that glass tip. I, I do enjoy fishing with those glass tips. Starting to think dogfish. Just the way the bitey. For those of you who just started fishing in that. Dogfish would be really like rattly, like temperamentally. Like it'd be like dun dun dun, and then it'll stop, then it'll go back like that. Where an eel would be like quite rattly, like small straps and stuff, where they're going ballistic. Right, while we're waiting for that, what we will do is bait another one up. Crab. That was a better bite. That was a bit better than a doggy. That looked quite ray -y. That, that was me. Yeah. Just checking my line then, just check it, yeah, that's thing, but the, that tip went straight over then. I so said that is the bigger bait of the two. So you get small eyes, take crab. I've had it before, you get spotted to take crab. Spotted love a bit of crab. But um main thing now. On the big hooks first. So that's the smaller hooks. That is the bigger hooks. Exactly the same again. What I tend to do, go in properly. I think I'm gonna have to bring that in a minute, guys. 
to bring that in, I think. I got a feeling dogfish. Let's go and find out. Keeping pressure with that line at all times. It's allowing that lead to stay up. This is exactly when you need to keep that lead up now. So not what we wanted, same time trying to like maintain fish care at all times really. As you see now, that's took the bottom hook. So if that was a dongle rig there, yeah, I wouldn't have had that. But uh, not the biggest of fish, not what we're after at all, especially when you're spending like a pound on a crab. It's just not needed, but um, first dogfish out each, hopefully the last. I'm getting back in now. Joseph on now, so he said. Doggy or? Huh? Most probably. Feel like a doggy? Feels what? I do. I wouldn't go so low, go to there and then pull each time. You get more leverage of the fish, yeah. Yeah. Another dogfish with Joseph. Hopefully these don't turn on. So, because I haven't got another rig ready, I can basically just bait this up. So what I'm gonna do is unclip this now. Try not to get that in the way of the other rod. Lower it down. Bit of weed on the uh, 
on the lead. As you can see, I've got my lead back. Sometimes by dropping your lead, I've just trying to explain to Joseph a little bit. Sometimes when you drop your little rod like, so far down, your liner goes straight down into the into the thing. So every time you're doing that, the lead's dropping down into the bottom. Where if you maintain, especially on a lot of reef marks, and you, you only gain this out of like fishing, like real rough ground really. But if you come down so far and make sure you've got constant pressure there and you do small lifts, you still maintain lift in the fish. But at the same time, you've got more, 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 more tension in the line at all times, more control of the fish. And there's nothing worse than dropping the tip, your tip down with all that line. So you've got 13 foot going down from your rod straight away to the, from, from your um, reel, what you drop in. But nine times out of 10, you can double that as it goes down to the water. So you're literally giving it nearly 20 foot of line, which is loads. It will see people lose fish. It's, um, it's something that I always maintain, especially when you're fishing rough ground, is to con is have control of the line and make sure there's no tension in it whatsoever. No tension, no less tension. <laughs> Uh, right, so still crab on that there. It's on my big rig as well. So um, I am going to scale this down. I'm going to put half a crab on this. So I can put half a crab on the other rig again as well. Okay, so uh, I had a few bouncy bites before and what could have been smooth round, smaller smooth round. I mean, now's the time to get, get them at Porlock. It's one of those venues that starts fishing early from. Surprising, there's a few being caught down our way at the minute as well. Slapton and B-Sands and stuff, which is always a nice sight. I mean, sometimes it means you haven't got to travel, but fortunately what I've found over the years, you just don't get the same sort of sizes as a channel. It's, um, Bristol Channel is the place to be for the smooth round. I mean, it's one of the only times I really that and the cod come up here now. I mean, most of the time, rays I don't bother with, just for the simple fact that um, I used to love it. I did. I used to love coming up and fishing like Selworthy, Grenadine and stuff like that. But what I find now is this sort of level of ray sizes you can get up here. So your chances of getting like 13 pound, uh, 14 pound small lines is, is very low. Where down our neck of the woods, they're there. Um, South Devon and Cornwall and stuff like that, you get a lot of big small lines. It's like the same with spotted ray. You get from the channel a five pound spotted is a massive fish. Where down our neck of the woods, you've got chances of seven pounders plus, you know what I mean? And um, some, it's fuel more than anything. I mean, the cost of fuel, if I want to come up here on my own, it's nearly 50 quid for the day, I would say. By the time I do my bait and my tackle and my, you know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of money, you know? And I think it restricts, like, it's good the social media, really. I think more people should get involved with like, like sharing travel, sharing thing. I mean, even if you're like fishing on your own, there's a lot of Facebook forums and stuff like that local, and you can put your anybody fancy getting out of a session. That nine times out of ten people do. I mean, there's something well, I've I've met a few guys recently. I'm looking forward to getting out with and um, and having a few sessions and that with. I mean, some guys who've never been out for a raid before. Um, someone wanted, wanted help with a bit of casting, and um, that's what fishing's about, isn't it? So anyway, I'm going to get this out. Stop talking. Exactly the same again, really, here now. Lovely. Let's see if we can get that first move round out. Close is in for another one here now. Lovely, he's out there. Let's get this stuff moved back up the beach now. And then uh, hopefully I'm gonna leave the ratchets on and just bring, drag the rods back. Joseph's got another uh, dogfish.
Dog fish. Four. I'm going to bring this one in here now. I've been having a couple of bites and I think it's another dogfish, if I'm honest. But uh, the sun's just about to come out. Beanies off, baseball caps on, let's go. See now, all I'm doing over this rough ground is keeping that tip high. And I can leave the fish up. That bottom bottom goes to go. Keeping tension in the line at all times. Bottom muck every time in a minute, guys. Bottom muck every time. So, exactly the same again. We don't want these, but it's not a lot of cho choice, is there? You've uh, perfectly hooked in the side of the mouth. And uh, to make it worse, they're small, small. <laughs> but um, we're getting back anyway. Where are the smooth hound? Where are the smooth hound? So uh, I'm gonna move back a little bit now and uh, we'll uh, see if we can get another, another dogfish out. <laughs> Notice I'm getting my rotten bottom back every time. And that's simply for the fact that I'm keeping tension. Sometimes you don't need to like reel down and reel up and lift fish. Um, you can tell when you need to try and lift a fish and the main thing with me, I always wait to, if I feel it, I can have the rod in that position where it's there and leave her back. And if I need to lever it more and more, like, depending on what marks I'm on really, clean ground, you get away with doing whatever you want with it. But on rougher grounds like that, just don't come down so far. I mean, having the rod, a rod go into that sort of position as it was like taking off like a cannon position is more enough so you can literally lift back. You can use your back into it as well, leave back. Then you, you feel that you've got to try and lift the fish. You've got more pulling power on the reel where you can bring down more slightly and then heave back as well. But the main thing is that tension. Make sure you have that tension at all times. I'm going to bring the bait back up quickly. I mean, that rod's there, all right there for a minute. I ain't got long. <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to do I'm gonna put that other bit of crab on. So these are my small hooks here now. Okay, so what I can do basically is uh, just bind him on like so. As I said, you've got to make sure that hook points proud on these smaller hooks. But as you see, you, you, you'll still catch a fish with them. So that's a Frio Chinu from Mustad on there at the minute. That's uh, lovely. Loads of juice. And then what I can do then is bring that there, the circle work, straight down for the top. And uh, where you go. Lovely. That's all set up, ready to be kicked out to the horizon. 
we'll get him out. I'm just going to bring the rod back up a little bit first. So I'm going to release the drag, okay, and make sure everything's up in this net so I'm not losing nothing, okay. I'll thumb the spool and then I'm basically going to let it off slowly as I walk back up the beach, keeping that tension in the line at all times again, okay, and then I'm going to basically put him back down, try and get the, uh, the back in there, tighten him up a little, and then... Uh, Where's the tide going? I like to face away from the tide with my tripod slightly. Like so. There you go. Let's get this one here out now, aren't they? So exactly the same again. My uh, rotten bottom release clip. The trace line will be down on the bottom there. I'll put my hook onto my imp. I'll push the line up over the top where it needs to be there now. So everything's out the way. Just enables that to release clip to do its thing and release every time, hopefully. As I said, I'm not losing many gear here now just by the way I'm fishing it, guys. Just keeping the lead up out of the way. Especially on that last little bit, it's important to keep the tension there. Nine times out of ten, you can tell when you get a smooth round because that'll be the hardest part of landing it because it will start trying to free and you'll feel the tension go, but you just got to keep control of the fish, okay? Especially you get one of those big doubles on. Just trust your gear, trust your hooks, tr trust your hooks, sorry, trust your knots, and um, yeah, that's, that's the only thing you can do, really. It's OCD in me now. I don't like it with a trace, but it's the opposite way round. Lovely. Right, let's bang him out. Because of where I'm, I've got that Obviously, uh, incline behind me when I'm casting. Just trying to go over the top slightly just to hit, be able to hit the lead, which isn't perfect, but at the same time, it's getting it out there. Lovely. So, probably been here 45 minutes, hour maybe. And uh, we've had about four or five dogfish between us. need that smut that's all we need just get that smooth round in and uh one ticks off the list hopefully you can get keep getting bigger and bigger i like a bit of tension there on the tip but not loads not so it's locked into place over a little slight tip art so you, you obviously you, the more tension you got on the tip the more tension it is on the bite so if you can allow your, your line to stay tight but at the same time maintain that bite detection but also at the same time when that especially smooth round they come around maybe nose it a little bit go to smash it if there's any tension there you'll probably go off well, i've had blondes off here i've had small lines off here i've had spotteds off here um i've had small pollock off here um, I've had codling off here, I've had pouting, whiting, and you can get spurs off here in the winter time. It can be quite productive, productive for spurs and stuff around the bottom there in that area. Um, wire, okay, especially when the whiting's in, guys, but you need to be using wire. A lot of people will fish massive baits for them, I wouldn't fish massive baits for them. You get away with like smaller size baits, baits but um, the, the trouble is with the, the spurs, they're quite finicky bites. I mean, you, you will get them run. Don't get me wrong, but nine times out of ten, you get really finicky bites, and uh, you need to hit into them. If you're getting loads of finicky bites, and you're not, and you're not getting, you're not catching no fish. When you're getting the bites, just hold it. When you can feel that, like something hammer in it, hit into it. Nine, nine, nine times out of ten, it's in the, the hooks inside the mouth, and you'll you'll hook up.
I've seen a polo sh shirt going off in a minute, I tell you. Lovely. Do you know what? I'm actually feeling the shades coming on. <laughs> hey! You know, to get to see that, I'll tell you what, I was, I was thinking the best today, a bit of suntan lotion. It's always being ginger. <laughs> right, let's get them on. First time in the year, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Joe. That's what I'm on about. Lovely. Lovely. Been working that hard. I haven't had a chance to get an air cut for the last four weeks. Wolf Barbers and Torquay is getting more and more busier as the days goes on, which is good. Lovely guy he is. Anybody's in the Torquay area, definitely good worth going checking out. Um, he's up near Babacombe there. Lo yeah, lovely guy. But uh, yeah. I had a nice pull down by then. I think it's a dogfish though. Dogfish? Nope, nothing. I'm going to bite there. Slack, so. A lot of dogfish out there today. Doggy? It's what it's about, isn't it? This is where we all can start getting a bit happier. I mean, sun's coming up to play, the summer to look forward to, all those sea angling adventures. And uh, yeah, it's something I'm looking forward to this year. We're off over to the Isle of Wight very, very soon. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm going to try and keep the dates under hats a little bit. Uh, just so uh, we're not, we, we sort of like can try and get on some of the marks. But um, no, look, very much looking forward to it. Myself and Joseph uh, going over to meet Nobby and uh, hopefully get on a few fish. I think I've got a dogfish on here, guys. He's sort of playing with it. What the hell is that? You're having a laugh. Nope. 
Nightmare. Thought it was gonna be a better fish then. Two on one up, girl up. Took his chinu and took his circle. Don't wanna be doing that all day. So, he's uh, tangled himself up, that's why. That last fish there. So that fish there, I'm gonna unhook this quickly, just so I can show you. I'll put him down. Look at that. Nice, mate. Look at that. Top hook, circle. Um, you don't need the dongle, guys, you really don't. It's, um, I find this set up, it worked for rays with a snail knot. Watch your, uh, if anyone obviously handling dogfish for the first time, just watch your bare skin, because it's like sandpaper. But um, as I said, those rigs perfect for smooth handling. I thought that was a decent fish then. What's that? Yeah, we yeah. Which is not good. Joshua was just saying the dogfish are pursing up. Let's, uh, let's get another bait up then. I thought it was going to be a better fish then. So. It wasn't lifting, it must have had weed or something on it. On the lead maybe. This is going to turn out to be a dog fest, isn't it? I can see it coming. Which is not good. I mean, uh, the last thing we want to be doing is coming up here, dog festing it up. Is that the... I see it, the little old ones, isn't it? What's that one? It's a little one. We need a little crab bear, boy. Little crab bear. I mean, when you're getting pestered like that with dogfish, using fish bait is going to make it worse but you've also got a chance for a ray. But we're here for the smuts, so we sort of got to stick to our guns in a minute. But Joseph's fishing squid baits, I believe, and um, he's also fishing crab baits on one. He's going for a mixture of both. Right there. I can't see it. Put that down there a minute. Nice. Back in action. That one there. So that sun's bright. That is a tiny crab bait. That's too small. I'm gonna have to Put something on that. Double crab up here, double crab up. Lovely. Two small crab on there now. They're not massive cod baits. Cod baits? <laughs> they are cod baits, but they're not today. Um, that's what you get for getting up at two o'clock in the morning. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed that one down through, bring it out the back like so. Feed that onto the hook, okay? Like that. What other baits can we use for smooth out? Lots of different baits. You'll get them on ragworm, you'll get them on lugworm, you'll get them on squid. I've had them on bluey. Um, Chesil, bluey's a brilliant bait for uh, 
for smooth rounds. If you get a smooth, few smooth rounds around, um, I've had them pick up bluey baits many a times. Um, what I find most of the time is, it depends where you're fishing to what bait you use. I mean, um, later on in the year, squid can be fantastic bait for them on the Bristol Channel, especially on the reef marks and stuff. And uh, they're quite good times really, because it saves you having to go out and spend loads of money on um, prawns, another one, really underestimated bait for, uh, for smooth round. What's going on here, guys, eh? There we go. He proper uh, done me, he did. I've seen the original bite and it went slack a little bit, but because I'm after the hounds, I thought I'd leave it just in case it dropped it and it was going to come back. But it didn't, it didn't turn out to be that way, did it? I'll get these around here now. Nice. There you go. We're cooking again, we're cooking. Right, so if I put that one there on there. Lock him in like that. Bring the... Uh, Grips up like so. Get tension on them to lock them in. And then we go and put him back on the rig here. There you go. Get this one out now. Not in hitting them far. He's literally just trying to get the lead where I need to get the lead and then uh, hitting it out there. I mean, 100, 100 yards, maybe 120 yards, something like that. See, I've got greys there already from the uh, dogfish. You have got to watch them. Lovely. Hopefully, something turns up apart from another dogfish because uh, there's nothing worse than that. We have Joseph and a squid bait out. He's on the raise. He's on the raise. So when I come here, I try and look for that post. Okay, it's what, what I normally look at. Um, any further than that, you've got to get out further but I just find that 
you're in a good depth of water there. You could go out further if you wanted to. I mean, a lot of guys go out a lot further than that. Um, as, it, as the tide goes back, I'll start moving up that way. If we fish low water, I'll move up that way because there's a lot more tide up there. But um, as, if, as it comes into the flood now, the fish seem to come right into the bay. You'll get them all the way along here, but I'll just find out with preference of experience over the years that uh, I've always done pretty well here, you know what I mean? But I'm also in front of the house if there's people here. You know I mean, you'll get them all the way along. Joseph just walking down now to cast one out. Lovely little layback cast there. Pick that cast up, lovely. Oh, never bite here now. Looking for another indication, really. It's mobbed with dogfish here in a minute, which I don't like. Lost my lead that time, I think. All fish. See a little tide line there at the minute. That'll start coming closer in a bit. Go back. It's a bait. Bait have been smashed. Look. To uh, get another bait up on and get him out there. I think it's time to get up the top now. I think so. So I'm going to move the gear up and we can get uh, get base camp set up really. Try and find a bit of a log to sit down on. I seen one up there a little bit earlier on. As I said, we didn't have our seat boxes and that really. I'd, take, I'd normally bring a seat bo box. You can take, take a bivvy and everything up here really. It's quite nice and comfortable. But. Um, we were planning on fishing another mark, it was a bit of a hike. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, one of them. But yeah, we'll get back up the, up the bank here now. So, up the top now. So I'm sort of setting the rods up, not so high, because uh, I'll sort of clear all the rough ground out in front of me, the rougher ground. Same right, it's mixed, isn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get some bait sorted now. Get the towel out the go. Probably put this one out first. Nice. What I can do, I can. The good thing about it up here as well, I can let them go. I mean, I can uh, let the let the mags off slightly. There's loads of room to cast. Just try and get them out. You see the tide line in the background if you pick that up at the moment. It'll start coming closer in as it uh, approaches high water. 
And uh, what I find is that getting that in that tide line sometimes up here can be difference between seeing a fish out and not. And I find that a lot on different marks and a lot of the Bristol Channel marks. Get rid of the, uh, get rid of the claws. Lovely. I'm to take. Lovely. Get this uh, bait elastic around this uh, nice crabby bait here now. now. What hooks on these? The big hooks, I think. Lovely. So, what I'll tend to do here is I'll bring that right down through the middle, like so. And then I'll bind that on the hook, like that. And uh, bring him up. Bait elastic him into place, like that. Lots of juices coming out of that now. And then what I'll do is I'll face the hook the opposite way around now by feeding it through the the crab bait like so. But you need to do this prop you need to set it properly because when that comes out there now, that needs to be solid at the bottom, which it is. So uh yeah. That'll do the trick. Good thing now, can wind them up to the horizon. And uh, hopefully, as that tide starts pushing in now, that, that tide line starts making their way into the bay, we'll, uh, we'll see a few fish out. So that's all set now. Lead set. Rig set. All we need now is a fish to play ball. All right, let's get one out. Full send. I need to try and get another 50 yards on that to get to that tide line in a minute. That tide line is about 200 yards out, I would say. That was 150 yards, easy. It's a long way out at the minute. Nice. So that's that one there taken care of anyway. So what we do now is try and get that rod tip a little lower. It's nice. Nice. Run that pillar. Run that pillar now. Next rod. So that one there's ready as well now. We. So what I'm going to do, the tripods fell over, <laughs> take that off, release the imp quickly there, and then uh, see what I've got there. So I'm going to clear all that off now. Back over to the bait station, probably best to put that bag underneath. It gives me a bit of height, saves me having to bend down all the time. Um, I'm trying to use the old crab up first, if I'm honest. So, 
Old crab up the top, bait elastic there. Let's trim this off. I'd like to say we have very, very limited spaces left on the Specimen Awards event. It's 22 quid, which includes a monthly Shore League, and uh, there'll be first, second, and third place trophies for the Shore League. A bit of fun, it works out a pound a month, so it's not going to break no banks. And uh, yeah, just a bit of fun between the anglers, what's involved in it really. So um, what I'm probably looking at is next year is, um, is turning, it, turning it into uh, what's on the cap, Sea Angle Adventures SAC. Now, we've done the Sea Angling Club many years ago, and uh, I found it really fun. We had a really good bunch of lads involved in it at the time, and it just worked. There was no clickiness, where we used to do meetups. Um, it, everybody got on, the laughs, it was just a good group of lads. And uh, unfortunately, it kept everybody fishing too much, I think. And uh, I think in the end, it's sort of like, I don't know, the success of it killed it, because it, it, we were always wanting to be out all the time, because obviously the fun we were having and stuff like that. And uh, I was going to try and mellow it down a little bit. So it's not just anglers from this part of the neck of the coastline. It's more anglers from around the whole of the, Brit whole of the UK, but specifically anglers what's interested in targeting specimen fish and um, having a bit of fun with it at the same time. Because that's what it's about, guys, isn't it? You've got fun at the end of the day. If it's not fun, it's not worth doing. There is very limited spaces left at the minute um, for that specimen awards event. So uh, anybody that's interested, be sure to get on their ASAP. Send me an email, seeangleadventures.outlook.com um, or on Facebook, a Facebook page, whatever. And I can give you the details and stuff. But um, as soon as we get to 60 anglers, that's it, guys. And we are on 50 at the minute. So there's about 10 spaces left, um, which is uh, which is good, really, for first year turnout for the Shore League. Now, I mean, the Shore League sort of sparked it off as well, um, which is good. Okay, so I'll go down like so, like that. I can't believe we haven't had a smooth bound out yet. I really can't. I mean, I know it's a little early, and I haven't put a lot of time in up this area of the woods, but. This is the sort of place you would come to and, and you could all, like literally guarantee you get one out. It's um, especially coming up here with crab. This time of year now. Another one what used to fish early was Westwood O. Sap, lovely that. Nice. Right. That cool bag covered up. That covered. I've got this all over my hands here. And uh, yeah, never one, I think. You got sevens on. Holding. I might scale down a lead now just to try and get a bit more distance. I think I'm going to. Sometimes it make a difference, guys. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do, I'll stick to the seven for the minute, and then what I'll do is on the next cast, on the next rig, when I bait them up, I'll, um, I'll stick one on then. Nice. Right, full send, let's go. So makes, set makes all the difference sometimes. Just by going and spend an hour down the beach or down the, down the field, just playing around with your casting, because I think when you're fishing sometimes, you pick up bad habits again, and I can feel them. I can feel them when I'm, when I'm fishing. And I think sometimes, you don't necessarily need to, but it, like now, getting it, oh, if I can get a bait out 106, 70 yards now into that tide, I'm gonna get a fish, I would say, but, you're not going to always hit that. You know what I mean, very good cast you're going to get there. You know what I mean? Um, but it's all, that's all out of experience and time putting in casting. 
I mean, 99% of the time, you're not even casting 80 to 100 yards. I mean, especially when you've got side winds and stuff. And uh, it can make a difference at different venues. Like the venue you are in now, you can see it's flat calm in the bay. And then as you go out around, you can see the tide coming through. I'll, I'll give you a camera shot after I've just done this cast. But um, it can, when we, we've had it before, when me and Ed, I mean, Eddie Riley was up here years ago, we were literally putting bomb leads out and hitting them far as we could up with seven ounce leads and coming back down. And we were getting them in the tide as the tide was moving through on um, pulley drop down rigs. But um, yeah, it's one of them really, isn't it? But see if we can get one out here. I was aiming right and I went exactly the same place as I did last time. Never mind. Okay, folks, so got myself a little fence here, which is very nice. What we got to pack up, I bought two pack ups today. I got salt vinegar, food goats, beef food goats, because we were supposed to be on a marathon mission. Then I got two Twixes, a seven fried chicken tortilla wrap, and a BLT. So um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking chicken first, you know. I'm actually thinking chicken first. Everybody loves a bit of chicken. And we all. But um, yeah, lovely day. You can see the tide in the background there now, as I'm talking about, and it comes, starts coming into Baymore. It'll come off this point and then it'll start breaking out more in, in shore this way. So uh, as soon as it starts doing that, I feel a bit more, um, more of a chance, really. So we have got a bite again. But um, I'll tell you what, I won't sit and eat that and give you lot munching noises going in your ear hole. I can't believe no one's out fishing. I really can't. I mean, a day like this, I mean, I suppose a lot, I was quite lucky really because um, my little girl wanted to do a baking day with my girlfriend. So um, she, they're right back at home and uh, they're cooking up. I don't know what they're cooking, but hopefully something nice for us when we get home later. <laughs> but. Um, no, I suppose a lot of people be out with their families and stuff on the, and they're doing the stuff on the kids on the beaches and stuff like that. And uh, luckily enough, we are managing to get out and wet a line, which is, uh, which is good. I mean, I've been, I've been gagging to get out. I mean, we went to that start point, point, point last um, Sunday, but uh, it's not the same really. You want to get into a few fish. I mean, it was quite a long and boring session. I know we had that bullish first thing and then it was just dogfish, dogfish, dogfish. But um, a bit like today, <laughs> I'd be very surprised if we don't see a smooth round that, I really would. I know it's early, but they've been showing on the reefs and they've been showing on different places and stuff, so there's no reason why they won't be here. And as I said, it's one of the first places to sort of like, sort of come to first, really. But um, no, fantastic conditions for it. I've got a bite there now. Very slow. Oh, uh, I don't know really what to go for, if I'm honest. It's been one of those days. I mean, we've got loads of crab. Part of me's thinking, do I'll put crab on or not? I mean, we're up here for smooth round, aren't we? So, but I'm tempted, if a day don't go to plan today, to go uh, head down to Cornwall tomorrow for a gilt. And we'll need crab for that. So it might be a case of using last week's up today. I've got... Um, I've got 15 crab there then, which I can uh, take down tomorrow. I mean, I'll only fish one rod anyway if I go down. But, um, chart a boat, leaving poor lot. Half a crab bait. 
cut them in half. Um, so we're baiting the small hook up first. And uh, yeah, here we go. So, stretch the bait out a little bit. And then, all I'm doing is wrapping the bait elastic around like so, just to bind the hook really. All right. That just gives me my shape. And then what I'm going to do there now is I'm going to bring that down through like that, right out through the bottom, right? And then I'm going to bang that on the hook like that. Not pushing too hard, it's hard enough. You don't want to squeeze the juices out and out like before it gets in the water really. Put them down and then my hook go through there like so up the top and then uh, it'll just sit there like that that's perfect see what I mean lovely so that's that one there ready to rock and roll so I'm going to put him to the side in the shade quickly and do the, do the next one so the next one I'm tempted to go with a bit of squid if I'm honest I know as soon as I put it on it's got dogfish written all over it but I bought squid up and I don't want to waste it if it looks like we're not going to get no hounds, I might just go down to one and fish one for a ray. So, uh, yeah. You know what, it's not a bad idea, actually. So, uh, exactly the same here. I've got half a, half a bait here, so all I'm going to do is cut a bit of squid off. It's what I call a squid and crab wrap is known by many so it's just a case of basically putting the squid inside the um, the crab inside the squid and then beat elastic around I just shape it more than anything before I put my hook so I got I, I, I mean I can sort of like judge the size it's the trouble when you're fishing a snail knot is um, it's already set I try not to get crab all over my weight bag. Okay, like so. Then you put that, that down like that. Put it down through. Bring him out like that. That's lovely. That is lovely. Bring that crab up like that. Not massive baits, guys, really. It's Joseph got here now, never dogfish. It's hoping he gets something decent out. Right, so then I'm basically going to set that hook now. So I can basically bring him down through the top like that. All he needs to be doing is sitting on the top of the bait. That's doing its job better now. It's important that top hook is, is exposed. And the reason being, it has to hook what's going to hook up. What's he got there? Never dogfish. It's breaking me, it is, guys. Breaking me. Let's keep this cool bag done up. It'll be a warm one today. Put him in behind there and just maybe cover him with a red towel. He's all right then, isn't he? Then. I'm going to go for the six ounces. So, um, these are ideal. So, Seacast online, Mike Coomber, he does a lot of um, fishing with Nick Panther. He's part of the Seagull Adventures team, Nick's sort of side of the team, doing do like a lot of bass fishing and like, like estuary work and stuff. You see him he's, he, with Nick and that. Lovely guy. Well, he's got a company called Seacast and um, they Seacast leads basically and they do a wide range of leads from um, to for bomb leads like that, grip, grippers, to continental, to carp leads, to like estuary leads, um, loads of different leads. Uh, definitely worth checking out on Facebook, cheap as chips. So um, yeah, obviously the price of leads and stuff, what, what people do try and charge, they, uh, they do send out as well, which, is, which always helps. And I do like these SKM modes. It's like the shape of the lead. Oh. I think I'm gonna have to start wearing glasses soon. 
I've got cat glasses. I don't know why I don't use them. My eyesight's terrible. I think it's it's part of getting older, isn't it? One of the many joys, guys. One of the many joys. So I'll put that one on there in a minute. Put him out. All right. See a couple of little taps, but we don't want those taps, do we? Lazy, really. Or should we get the pliers out? Not the way to be doing it, guys. Don't be lazy. <laughs> don't want to go in down like that. I'll twist the twist them around like so, and then. Bring him down. That's that one set. He's ready to go out. Next lead. A few boats going out today. I said you probably hurt your hands, and I got builders' hands like machines. But um, I just basically use my thumb lip just to turn up, turn the the lead. And all I do is I'll, I'll pinch down in there. I mean. Some videos, what the, some of the guys do and stuff like that, I always find that's more than enough. I mean, that's going to set straight away, and I do want it to break at the same time. So, um, yep. he fell over here, look. It's nice having this bench, though. <laughs> if we don't get no smooth out today, definitely worth going back on the page because we come up here many years ago, me and Stu Norrish. And um, we never never guy Andy he came up with us, and uh, he had his first smooth round up here. He was over the moon, and so we had some guys down from Norfolk what come down to do a guided session with me, and um, they both had smooth rounds as well, which was nice. But um, as, as as you can see, it will it will produce. You can't guarantee it every time, can you? But nine times out of ten, it's a mark I'd come to and almost guarantee getting one out. And uh, it's just not looking like it today. <laughs> Hopefully, for Joe Six's sake, it is because it'd be nice to see him get a ten pounder out. I mean, when I come up here, that's that's really the. I mean, I'm not coming coming down this end to go and get these twenties. I'm coming down here targeting a t double figure. You know what I mean? You get a double figure, you're happy for the day. But um, no, that's those baits set up now, and uh, I'm going to try and get these out now, a bit more distance, and uh, see if we can get them in that tide, just to see if we can make it make a difference with the, getting a fish out or not. I have a dogfish with Joseph, I think. I'm going to bring this one out in now. I've had a couple of bites on this and uh, it's gone left slightly. I think it's another doggy. I think we're going to get dogged out today, guys. I honestly do. Which isn't good, but you can't win them Lift him up. Dogfish, I think. Trying to lift him off the bottom. No dogfish. Nightmare, isn't it? So drop him down here a minute. Just to unhook him. Lots of smaller fish, guys. And I mean lots of smaller fish. I'm going to get him back straight away.
The only thing now, just uh, on the hook, on the hook, on clip. I can use that to uh, bait my next one then. What one do I go for? Tell you what, I'm going for the squid, squid and crab bait first. Let my mags off a little bit here. I'm going to try and be a bit dangerous. Okay. Nice. Lift him up slightly. There you go. Right. Try and get a big one out there. There we go. Well, that's, it's actually set lovely that. So nice. All right, so pull that. I'll pull that up. So you can see that there now. Ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Don't want to be too dangerous, but I've got to be dangerous. Unfortunately, I've got to. I've got to try and get one out there. Better, but it's too far at a minute. But that tide's probably, I'd say probably 300 yards out. <laughs> I ain't hitting that. So, ratchet's back on that one now. It's definitely not, it wasn't the best of my cast, if I'm honest, but it went out 150 yards easy. It's, I would like to say that tide line where I am at the moment is probably nearly double that. Going in, yeah, it's got to keep going. Lovely day. Beats being in work, that beats being sat in with it raining at the outside. I mean, that rain was mental. We had it the other year, didn't we? If you don't know if a lot of you remember, it was just raining constantly for the first of January through like October through to like March, basically. And April come through, and we started to have a really good spell of weather. But, um, I'm gonna get this other rod in now.
Look at that guys, absolutely crazy. Just, it's probably the smallest bullis, bullis, the smallest dogfish I've ever seen. And I mean, I've ever seen. Check this out. <laughs> so, I would go to say it's the smallest one I've ever seen. It's tiny, literally hand size. I'm gonna get him straight back now because I don't like this, like that. It's, it's a uh, baby, in it? Trouble. <clears throat> well, what do you do? What do you do? It looks like we're getting hammered at the minute, Joseph. It's like 14 nil to the dogfish. So we need to try and do something to pull something out the bag here. I don't know what we're going to do, but um, we need to make something else appear. One rig off. You ever rig on? This is a smaller bait one now. I put the squid and one out last time and uh, I've got to be honest guys, I'm not feeling it. I thought we'd have had one out by now. Um, I really did. So it's not looking good at the minute. No doubt, people will see the video, they'll come up here in a couple of days and they'll get into them. I mean, if you want to smooth round and out and you've never had one, definitely a place to come to. You put a couple of trips in, uh, like now, now sort of time, especially coming from May onwards, you're guaranteed one, you know what I mean? But they, this is when they start to appear early. Say guaranteed one, you're not guaranteed one a day. Joseph said to me, he said, don't say that. I said, what? He said, you just said we were going to get into the fish today looking at that water. I said, look, look really fishy, didn't it? But unfortunately, you can't win them all the time, can you? But um, I'm going to try and get this one out. Move that one over. See if we can get one out then. I don't know if you noticed what I just done then, but I tried to go for a longer drop. The timing was out slightly and I hit the ground. It went out, that leather be dead. And it went out about 80 yards, I reckon. I was lucky because I took my mags off then. I just thumbed the spool. I heard what I'd done as I come round. <clears throat> Even though it's flat, it's got divots, and they do make a difference at times. Of that, I just can't cast. <laughs> right. It's happened to me before up here, I'll tell you a story, years and years ago. And it was a PB at the time. It's gone back, it's come up to the Bristol Channel, fished a mark called White Patch. And uh, we got there and I was using a multiplier and I, as I went to turn around, I was, I was, instead of going to a field and practicing casting, I was trying to practice casting when I was fishing and it weren't working. I was ending up bird's nesting and like spending more time bird nesting and like changing reels and I was, was fishing really. Anyway, I went to go and cast one out. I was going to cast one out. It had all the old sliding mags on the Pen 525s. Um, and uh, as I went to turn around, I went to go like that and ended up bird's nesting it. And the lead literally went about 10 metres into the water. And I thought, you know what, leave it there. So I left it on the thing, just sat there, rigs in the water anyway. I didn't even care, you know what I mean? I just wanted to get another bait on the go. So I got the other rod set up and like that. I turned around, I went to cast, and my mate said to me, Andy, you got a bite on that other rod. And I turned around and I thought, watch, the rod went like down like that, back up, completely into slack line. And you say slack line, the fish must have come inwards. The good thing about it, when we, it was just approaching low water, and the boulders was just going onto sand. So 
So I got on the rod, started reeling in over the bird's nest and uh, at a nine pound eight small eyed ray, I was over the moon. But um, funny how things happen, don't they? Maybe it's worth bird's nesting a couple of times a day, Joseph, see if we can get the same pot luck, eh? Well, I have to come bait some up now. That's slack in there, isn't it? Ooh, I had a slacking line then. Okay guys, getting a slack line on this one, keep the bite, I think it's another dogfish. Smashed, absolutely smashed. It's, um, it's definitely fish out there. So what I'm gonna do, I think there's a lot of smaller fish out there. I'm gonna, put the, I'm gonna go back to sevens, I was getting better. Uh... Do you know what? Something's telling me that, that bait there has got it written all over it. I have these funny thoughts sometimes. <laughs> We're both in attack mode, me and Joseph. When a dogfish come on like that, it's just, you just want to get someone else out. And that's, that's a battle sometimes. I mean, if you can get someone else out, it's, um, it's a war one. <laughs> we can go home. Right, I'm going to get this one casted out now. And uh, yeah, I've gone back to the seven ounce lead. I think it was holding a bit better. That was quite bouncy. So uh, let's have a look. Look at that, very nice. Dry line. Waiting game now. Spoke to Ads, he's um 
gone over to Wales today. He mentioned it to me earlier at the earlier on in the week. I just um, I had my heart set on a big smut this weekend, and I've, you know, like an early big smut. And uh, we went and got the crab and everything for it, and just it, it killed me this morning when we got up. We couldn't park because I thought, you know what? I just had a really good feeling about it. Um, so it sort of like played around with our played around with our day really. And I've, with Joseph obviously having the shore league as well, he wants to catch a fish, doesn't he? And it's a bit of a big gamble going on sitting on one of the ever marks further up channel. And I just thought with the amount of rainwater we had, it was a big gamble for him, not more. I, mean, I don't mind sitting there and blanking, it is what it is, you know what I mean? But he's obviously fishing a shore league, he wants to get a fish out, doesn't he? So um, it's a good shore league um, venue, this. You've got a chance of a lot of mixed species. Um, never dogfish straight on again, it's breaking me, guys, it really is. And uh, it's getting to the stage where I want to leave. <laughs> Because it's um, it's just crab after crab. I mean, that, that bait there, I've literally just cast it out. I've not even turned the camera off, so I've talking, been talking to you the other time. And um, it's it's going again. It's got to stick to our guns, haven't we? Give it up over the high water. So high water is around half 11, right? It's, 10 to 10 now. So we've got an hour and a half. I reckon we give it till one o'clock. If we've not had anything by one o'clock, we can't come up with another plan of attack. Now I know a deep water venue from here, which could be quite good. The only thing is I've got glass tips and um, it's off the rocks. And you do have to get, get the fish up. So, um, I might try it, if I'm honest. I'm not 100% sure yet, depending on how we feel. It's been a long day, but if we haven't had no fish by one o'clock, I'm thinking getting back in the motor, driving around to a car park, getting up over a mountain, and uh, <laughs> seeing if we can get a few fish out. Chance of rage, you've got a chance of all. The trouble is, last night, I got my gear ready, and all I, all I got, because me, personally, I was, I was going out for one thing, so I've just got smut rigs out, smooth arm rigs. Call them smuts, um, for those of you who don't know. And um, yeah, so I've, that's all I've got with me. I've got the big, I've got, I've got uh, 3 old versions and I've got five, 4 and 5 old versions. So I can scale the baits down. I mean, a raise to take the circle woods hooks anyway, you know what I mean? And I could change the circle woods for chinnies if I wanted. But I have got smooth arms on my brain at the minute, so. Um, I think I got I think I got a dogfish on that left rod already, which is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Here's what it is. Can't win them all. Never dogfish for Joseph, and um, I've got a bite on my left down side rod again now, guys. So um, I'm gonna bring this in, but uh, I do think it's a change of venue over uh, on the back end side. And um, yeah, we've got to see how it goes. So let's get into this one now. I think that's bringing it up over the rough ground there now.
You know it's a dogfish for it even lands, don't you? It is. Same again. That circle work, straight to the side of the jaw, doing its thing every time. I think we're gonna have to take him uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to take him up and I <laughs> bit of a mission the next the next mark but if it pays off it pays off it can be quite dangerous you've got to know what you're doing up there and have the right cor correct footwear um, and I would not advise it to anybody who hasn't done it before um, because one slip and you could be in tr big trouble all right big trouble but um we'll film it as always hiya mate it's a lovely morning for it all right Crab again, let's go and get him. All right, let's try and wind this one up now then. Go into that. I got into that. Seven ounce lead right out there. Laid up lovely. All right. Move that one over. Lovely, let's do it. So, um, just got to keep at it. <laughs> so, just crab baits again. I'm sticking to my guns a little bit here at the minute. It's a little bit disheartening when you're just pulling in dogfish, but it's, um, you get into a rhythm where you think to yourself, I'm going to get one, I'm going to get one. You'd like, just, I don't know. Don't want to be beaten. It's probably the best way to describe it. I mean, Joseph's over there, bait after bait after bait, exactly the same as me. He's, he's, we're doing all we can to get one out. I mean, you can't do much else but try, can you? But, um, it's fishing sometimes, isn't it? You can't win them all. I mean, uh, give, it a, give it tomorrow or the day after, you could come down here and bag up on them. It's uh, every tie's different. It won't be the first time I blanked here. It probably certainly won't be the last. But um, I did think with the way the conditions were, I did think we would be in with a good chance. And we've traveled from one end of the channel to the other to get here. We've traveled from, with, from Timmouth to um, best, best part of the um, upper Bristol channel, an hour all the way back down to Minehead. So uh, dedication is definitely on the card. <laughs> 
over that stupidity. We'll find out at the end of the day. <laughs> So, I've got the small baits here now. So I'm just going to double up the crab. It's not something I fish very often, if I'm honest. And something tells me well, there's not a lot of locals here today either. It might be the case that the, the dogfish have been in the numbers and they've just, that's why no one's coming down here. But you don't know that until you try it, do you, at the end of the day? So it's all pot potluck fishing. It's, um, oh, you get bait elastic stuck. Oh, I got it, I got it. Whee! Around the eye of the hook. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gone over TT with the size, the bait sizes either. I mean, the baits I'm putting out are relatively uh, small. What? A beautiful day for it. A load of uh, elderly folks come down on the right hand side there. It looks like they're getting ready to go in the water, Joseph. Yeah, it looks like they're going for a dip rather them than me because I wouldn't want to go for a dip in there. That's that first one done. What do I do? I've got to bait it up, and I? I've got to bait it up. I'm going to put a fish bait on this. I'm going to, think, I'm going to fish a whole squid on this bait. It's big hooks as well. It's, um, yeah. I think the second part of this adventure will be a second production. And um, we'll go and do a rock mark, a close by rock mark um, over low water, maybe some of the flood. Um, so. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with it. I mean, the, the main thing with where we're going in a minute is um, is you really got to know where, you know what you're doing and where you're stepping because, it, as I said, it can be, um, it could be fatal. Uh, I've fished it a lot over the years. I've had blondes, small eyes, um, congers, smooth hounds. I've had loads of different species from there. Garnards. Um, it's uh, very fast tides. You can only fish one rod, and um, as I said you need the fish to go in your favour at the same time and you need to get the fish up and quick. So it's a case of, um, yeah, probably sharing a tripod and uh, working as a bit of a team. We will take your camera and gear and that and uh, yeah, see if we can uh, get a fish out from there. I mean, it's a long way for us to come up just for one tide, really. I mean, Adam was meant to invite me to come over to Wells with him. And um, to be honest, I do enjoy fishing whales, like for the blondes and stuff like that. It's good fun catching a few rays and stuff. But if I want to catch cat, cold catch rays, personally, I normally go like South Devon, as I said before. Joseph's got another bite now. Um, just because of the size, really. At the end of the day, for me, I'm always, when I go fishing, I want to, I want to have the chance of pe beating a PB. You know I mean, I want a chance of catching a monster. And most of the time, that's down to venues. And the likelihood of me beating PBs over in Wales are very low unless you're targeting smooth hounds and stuff like that. I mean, you get some big smooth hounds and stuff, don't they? Um, but for, um, for like the spotteds and the small eyes and blondes and stuff, it's, um, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? But it's not, it's not necessarily something that I would, 
I would go out my way to go and do, if I'm honest. Um, this sort of time of year now, personally, is all about place and smooth hours for me. Um, and then as I get at Bream as well, and then as it starts going into like um, into the later months, just like going on from May onwards, really, eight, end of April, May, I'll start targeting blondes and small eyes. Um, sometimes you get an early run, sometimes you don't, but that's what I would normally do. Um, spotted and small eyes would sort of like come first, and then out for a lot of the summer months, just um, hit the rain marks on, our, on like our coastline, really, and I love it. It's not just, there's a lot of blank sessions, don't get me wrong, but it's the scenery and it's, to be honest, one thing of this year I'm looking forward to is the fitness sort of side for it because I've, I've slacked big time over the, in the last three years, really, a couple of years, at least two years. And um, I mean, beforehand, I was up and down cliffs three or four, four nights, five nights a week sometimes, you know what I mean? And my fitness levels was, was unreal and I can feel it as I'm getting older, I'm not getting any younger. And I go in like on walks and up like cliffs and like places like even when we went um, start the other day, I said I can, you can feel it on your body. You know what I mean? And um, the only way to stay feel young is by uh, burning the exercise in, I think, isn't it? But um, here's what it is at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, it don't help when you go fishing. You take loads of rubbish food, is it? Like sandwiches and crisps and whatever else and and stuff like that. But um, you have got to try and stay. Uh, fairly fit if you want to carry on doing these sort of things when you get older i mean you look at guys like rob york um fit as a fiddle and uh you know what i mean and he's not obviously over the years and that fishing's is yeah, some of the stuff he's done fishing and like the walks and stuff like that and his fitness levels are still unreal where there's blessed part of me um early 40s and knackered <laughs> you know what i mean but no it's, it's true you've got what you got to start looking after your body as you get older and you and uh webby talk nonsense again <laughs> I do get a lot of people out, uh, say they enjoy the little talks and stuff, so they're just trying to create talks within the videos, really, guys. I mean, um, I, as I said, on the, the other month, I had someone look at the channel and that, and they were saying you need to do like more like talks and um, just like connect with people. So I've been uh, I've been sort of do, trying to do that, really. Let's put this one in here now. I'm going to fish a squid bait on this. Okay. What I'm going to probably fish later on on the, on the cliff mark. This has got dogfish written all over it. I know before I even cast it out. I know there's a dogfish on one already. <laughs> oh, please, no, please. Look at that. It's a lovely squid bait there. I mean, small eyed, blonde, spotted. I don't think you get a blonde now, but you've got a chance of a small eyed or a spotted. But um, even a smooth owl may take it, you know what I mean? Chuck all that stuff back in there now. Get the bait in towel. Ready to rock and roll. So I think I'm going to have to bring the right one in. That's been up there for ages now, I think. Has it been in ages? Let's have a look. What weights have I got on there? It certainly has been out there ages. So yeah, I'll bring the right one in. And then uh, we'll see what the day holds, eh? Okay, guys. So we've got the uh, tide line. is starting to move in closer now. What you can see of the point where we are now, it was circling and around, but it's it's around about 150 yards at the minute. I'm thinking I can get it. I'm thinking I can get it. So I'm going to wind one up, um, try and get him up out onto that tide line, just to see if we can get fish out, just to see if it makes a difference or not. Really, I mean, uh, we're doing everything else at the minute, and uh, it's not it's not working. This is set from dogfish. So um, yeah, I think I mean Joseph just said we're going to give it here. This, uh, this little production on uh, Paul Lock Weir. And then we'll do a separate production. So don't get to get, forget to check out the second production, which is the carry on from today in another adventure. So I'm not 100% sure we're gonna go yet. We're thinking about Holston Cliffs. Um, it's, uh, it's a mark straight opposite us, really. It's, um, you, you sort of park in, um, 
park in a car park, walk along down towards Bossington and head up over the cliff. But uh, it can be tricky to find. And um, to be honest, I'm not going to show how to get there. The reason being, the last thing I wanted to see is someone venture down where we've gone and hurt themselves. And it's, it's a venue which is very, very dangerous, okay? And I mean very dangerous. You're fishing for very large heights and slippery rocks. And, uh, you know what I mean? You've got to know what you're doing. You have correct footwear. You know, the ropes, I would say, would be... I've got a rope in the van, what we can take, if I'm honest, just in case we need to tie up on everything. There's, there's, there's points that put in where, where we can use for it. And, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But, yeah, let's get one out. I don't know if he's got one on or not. I'm going to try and get this one out now. I've got to ping it, and I mean ping it, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's not fresh line either, so this could crack. It's in there. Right, we got one in the tide. We got one in the tide. Which is good. So, we can sort of see the difference now by making that. Making that lead go that little bit further just to put that bait in that tidal water and honestly guys it can make a difference sometimes fish t tend to feed in the tide just because they're being lazy and they can sit there and the bait and the food and everything else can come to them but um yeah, see how it goes. There you go. So, it's all set now. We have around, I reckon, an hour, hour and a half. See how it goes. Well, Not much happening, I've got to be honest. I think we've had, I don't know how many we've had on camera, but we've probably had nearly half of that again. I think we've had a dogfish nearly every single calf at the minute. And um, I know you look, we ain't gonna be wanting to watch dogfish constantly. But it is what it is, guys, at the end of the day. It's no different than us going out than anybody else going out. I mean, you can only catch what's in front of you. And uh, if there's only dogfish there, that's all there is. But it's killing me, really. I've got a squid bait going out in a minute. So um, I'm hoping that's going to do the, do the business, really. So it's looking sexy anyway, isn't it? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in, in the shade a minute. And then uh, I'm going to bring this left one in first and bring this in at about, give it 60 seconds. That right one's in the tide. We were fishing a little stock one day and um, there's a guy next to me fishing and uh, literally we were there and as soon as the tide dropped, the tide line dropped into about 120, 130 yards, I was hitting it and the tide stayed quite far out that day. And unfortunately for the guy, he, couldn't, he, was, he was using fixed balls and he was only casting about 80 to 90 yards and he never seen a fish at all right next to me and that extra 60 yards made the difference between me catching fish or not on that day. And I find it all the time, you can see it now as it's coming through, you can see the tide line kept approaching. And not, what happens normally is that as, it, as it starts to flood, it will come in closer. And um, obviously where, where the headland comes in and the headland comes around, the tide's going to move at different speeds, isn't it? As it's going in and out. 
obviously the depth of water decreases and increases and stuff like that, so that tide line will move. But it's definitely worth it. If you and it, and it goes to show, not just there, when we, me and Geff went up on the um, Stingray marks, up on the Solent, um, one, thing, one thing there which I found is, um, we were, I was cast out to the horizon. I mean, I was hitting 120, 130 yards. They were pinging, like going from there to there, seven ounce leads just holding. And um, he, can't, he got the only fish of the day and literally it was about 30 yards out, this, this tide line, and he literally dropped it on the tide line. You could have under, you could have literally flopped it like that, bomb, only fish of the day. So it doesn't make the difference if the tide line's 200 miles out or it's 50 yards out or it's wherever it is. It's just getting it in that tide is what I'm trying to say. Don't be, don't be afraid to hit it close and don't be afraid to hit it long. That was a bite then, wasn't it? I'm gonna bring this right, left one in a minute. Bring this left one in quick, quickly and then uh, we'll try and uh, get that other one in. Dog fish. Dog fish again. See, I'm not stopping reeling, I'm just keeping that lead, okay, up. I don't think I lost a ledge yet today. Dogfish on the surface. Skimming in across the surface. I've lost my lead there, I think now. I should have said that, should I? First lead of the day, gone. Oh, I don't know if it's still there or not. Yeah, our lead's gone. Lead's gone. There you go. There you go, laddie. And as we see again, look at that circle work. Look at that. Does the job every time. Okay, so that's that one. I've got a squid bait to go out. I'm gonna put this dogfish back in a minute and then uh, get the squid bait out. I reckon we'll give it an hour and then uh, see what the plan of attack is. Okay then, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna hammer this one out now into the tide. Me and Joseph just come up with a plan of attack. We are gonna move. I mean, um, we've, they can turn up any time now, but we're using a lot of crab up and um, just getting rewarded with dogfish. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is called Dogfish Tales, the Bristol Channel Nightmare. <laughs> Someone else just turned up now to take advantage of the dogfish. Okay, let's, uh, let's all take advantage of the dogfish then, innit? All right, so what I'm gonna do first, to make sure that lead unclips, I'm gonna bring him right up on here. There you go. All right, let's do this. That's in. Never one in the tide line, ladies and gentlemen. Never one in the tide line. Okay, guys. So just gonna go down and see Joseph a minute, see how he's getting on. Bringing his rod in here now. If we were Adam, we'd have Adam by now. So, uh, yeah. 
It's not looking good on this front, but you never know. Something's on the end of that. Nope. Fish or not? We got a fish. I bet you a million pounds, Joseph. It's a dogfish. What do you reckon? I don't want to pick you up on that bit. You don't want to pick me up on a million pounds? Don't lie, why not? Definitely a <laughs> That right, arching over that. Yeah, that's us guys. I hope you've enjoyed the day. Well, I hope you enjoyed the session as much as we have. <laughs> but um, as you can see what Joseph's doing now, look, he's using a rod, he's not going right down, he's keeping tension there the whole time now. It just enables to get the fish back. And he should have took me up on a, he should have took me up on the, on the a million pound, I reckon. I'll go and land him a minute, Joe. Stay there. So, we have a fish. Hey! Well, look. I'm going to touch it. There you go, mate. Lots of dogfish, mate. And uh, he's just had this conger out. So, ladies and gentlemen. Joseph just had this strap conger eel, took a crab bait or was it squid bait? Uh, crab that was. Crab bait and uh, yeah, they can be quite tricky to hold. The big ones are easier because you can get in underneath them, but uh, they're quite safe to stake out the water. They stay out the water for quite some time, but uh, they can be uh, quite aggressive and they can be quite uh, slimy and you'll get that all over you. But uh, he's going to get that one back in now. It's not the size you wanted for the weight, is it? A 20 pound big order. Yeah, he wants a 20 pounder, but um, yeah, we'll get him back in now. But yeah, at least it's uh, at least we've got something else apart from dogfish out. There he is, he'll go in back. We just got to make sure they're going back now, guys, because he's going he's swimming backwards. These eels, there he goes. Look at him go off. Look, gone for the tide. We'll make sure he goes back. The tide has stopped dropping now. He's in. Is he in? He's going in. Make sure he goes back. He's swimming up the beach here at the minute. All right, we'll have to push him. Oh, that might be, that might got him. There, he's in now, he's in now. Go on. He gets some depth there, he gets some depth there now. Think you'll have to... One thing to make sure you're doing is with these fish, that they're going back because a lot of people think the fish have gone back, especially smooth hounds and that. You might have to chuck him out there, mate. Wait for a wave. There you go. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Especially with the smooth hounds because they swim back up the beach at you. And uh, no one wants to see dead fish as they're walking along, and we don't want to see dead fish either. So it's a case of uh, making sure they go back. Look, they're both there, there, then. So, uh, yeah, I do. Well done, Joseph. Swimming? Yeah, the ocean's down there. Lovely. Well in. Beat the dog fest. Hey. You are, folks? So we've been down here, best part of, uh, I don't know, how many hours do you reckon we've been here, Joe? five hours so the tides just turned probably fished it back an hour now and uh, we're going to call it a day we've had unlimited amounts of dogfish i don't think we could have had any more dogfish and um it sort of like killed the session a little bit because we were hoping to get into a few smooth hours unfortunately that never happened but uh joseph managed to pull an, an, e an eel out so at least we've had something rather than just dogfish in the session so our plan of attack is to go off and do a second part of the production now so um, this production here will be basically us fishing Porlock Weir. 
The second part of the day will be us fishing a never mark, um, the high cliff mark, basically. I'm hoping to go there. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm going to go back to speak to Joseph, see what, if he fancies it. And if so, we'll just go down and fish one rod each on, on, and share a tripod. And there's ledges which I can, we can get onto. They're safe enough. I've got a little rope in the van if we need it. And um, I just think we're in the neck of the woods and we've got some bait with us and it'd be silly not to give it a go so that's what i think we're going to do guys really and um yeah the day's not gone to plan you can only do what you can do and you can only catch what's in front of you but uh just one thing before i go and start bringing these new two rods in please hit that subscribe button if you guys enjoying the longer content and enjoying the, the our sea angling adventures please hit that subscribe button to stay tuned with the all the latest productions and stuff and um, it does help support the channel and it also um, it keeps you up to date with all the latest productions and stuff uh, we've got some really good stuff coming this year so don't forget to check it out hit that subscribe button now that one's come around so i'm going to take the other one in first I think I've just lost my lead. This is strange. Lovely light breeze now. Sun's out. Joseph's into another fish. Can't be bad. <laughs> All right. So I'll dump my lead then. And, uh, Yeah, absolutely stripped, look. Absolutely stripped. Can't win them all. Uh, bear rooks. It's not going to catch anything out there with bear rooks. There's a lot of smaller dogfish around, guys, I think. And, uh, yeah. But um, we'll get them taken off. And this fish starts slightly bigger, bigger hooks where I'm going now, I think. It's, it's very fast tied. And uh, what I fa find is um, you, want, you want them to hook up straight away. That hook port's got, point, got to be proud. And they tend to run. It, even like the, the rays, um, they'll run. The Vadi eels there are up to like 20 pound. It's, it's not a bad mark, to be honest. It's not, a, it's not a novice mark. It's more of an experienced angler's mark. And as I said before, you've got to know the area. It's not a sort of thick place you just turn up to and just you think, oh, I've just seen those fit boys fishing in a YouTube video. I'm going to go and copy them. It's definitely not that type of mark, guys. But as I said, I don't, we'll, we'll show it. Um, we'll show, show like the, the session. I'm not going to show exactly where it is just because of obviously dangers and stuff. Um, that's where I'm hoping to go. It might, I don't know if Joseph's going to be up for it 100% until I speak to him. But um, it's, uh, it's a nice mark. It is a nice mark. And, we, and it's right next to us, basically. So uh, we'll hopefully um, give that a go. But that's the first rod down anyway. So, since I bought my T9s, I've been looking after them. My old ones were battered. I've just been putting them in the cases every time and that. I mean, trying to get a rod build and that now these days, especially down our neck of the woods, is a nightmare. You've got to really send them off. There's not really a, a dedicated rod builder anymore. I mean, Aaron Ensley, I used to get him to do all my gear because he was phenomenal, like really good. Um, but you've got Dayu Ellen in South Wales and then Roscoff was a bit further up again. And um, it's just a nightmare, obviously, for me, trying to get rods over to the people. I mean, it means me going without my rods for a little while. So I'm trying to look after them a bit more so I don't have to do that. <laughs> but um, there you go, that's the first one. Right, we're gonna get a second one in now. So. This one was one that was out in the tide. He swung round a lot.
a little bit of weight there. Might be a dogfish. Nine times out of ten it will be. <laughs> I see something, see something running. Dogfish again, I think. Ends it off with another dogfish. Oh. I honestly think it's like a breeding ground for him at the minute. I mean, some of these fish a very small, I mean, I mean, tiny, tiny, look at that. It's like miniature. I'm gonna go and put it back. And that's basically, guys, the end to our sea angling adventure down at Porlock Weir. I mean, uh, for those of you that haven't seen the productions we've done down here before, do go and check them out. I highly recommend it. Just see one on Fish in the Bristol channel uh, for Smooth Hound. It's on, the, it's on the channel. If you go back down through the library, you'll see us up here smashing in hounds. And uh, unfortunately, today wasn't our day. You can't win it all every time. And uh, it's been a nice day out. It has been a nice day out. Hopefully, it's not going to be a complete wasted journey. I mean, uh, the way the wind's going at the minute as well was turned more westerly and it was due forecasted to be more westerly later on. We'll be protected where we're going as well. So uh, hopefully we can get into a few, but from all of us at Sea Angle Adventures, another nightmare session on the Bristol Channel today. Okay, folks, so um, I've come to an old venue of mine and uh, I've been up here for many years. If it get, the wind gets more worse than it is at the minute, it's like gusting 14 at the minute, but we are very tight. So we're fishing at height. You've got to bring the fish round to the left and then someone goes down onto the right thing. If the fit, if it's big, if it's normally half decent size, you can normally hand line them up from the bottom there. But uh, this is not a venue I'd recommend anyone to go very very dangerous you've got to know exactly where you're going one route wrong move and you can see the cliffs to the left hand side if i get joseph to pan around in a minute you are in real big trouble i mean we've got a rope to get us down onto the platform and um that's the only thing you can do really but as i said it's not for the faint-hearted and it's not for the novice angler you've um you've really got to know what you're doing on this venue if not you could be in serious trouble so uh crab baits now um I find it fishes better in the summer, really, but um, we're, we're going to have a go because we're here. And uh, using rotten bottoms, don't necessarily need to, but if the tide and the fish pulls you around to the left, um, you, need to, you need to basically get out of it quick. So there's not a lot of room for casting here. I've got to hit it out as far, far as I can to the, to the left and then let it come back around.
and you've, that, that is basically it. A lot of side wind there at the minute. And then uh, got to try and set up down like that. Lovely. Well, guys, <laughs> two at a time, top hook and bottom hook. Uh, circle work done his thing straight away there. Trying to, I don't know what I want to after I try and get the um, first one out easy enough. So there he is, the first one. And uh, as I said, these circle works, especially the way it's set up on this rig, is um, a lip hook every time. But unfortunately, we just can't get away from these dogs. I mean, uh, it's absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. But the way I look at it is this we could have gone to Wales today, catching loads of small rays, or we could have come here and caught loads of dogfish. Now, Wales probably sounds better in theory, but I always say I like to have the chance of catching something decent and um, the venue I'm at at the minute, you've really got that chance. Looking at the cliffs behind me there, believe it or not, me and my mate, I'm going to put these dogfish back two seconds, I'll be back. Me and my mate Scott, years ago, fishing on those ledges there. Now, it, I don't know if it, what it actually looks like here, but it's very, very steep where I am at the minute. Uh, I actually feel uncomfortable where I'm fishing now because I'm used to ropes. And uh, we used to come down over this with no ropes. And uh, I'll tell you what, I would never want to do it now. And I would tell anybody whatever even thought about doing any of these type of fishing, ropes at all times. I mean, we've got a little rope today. And uh, to be honest, we're going to move. The simple fact, it's not... It's changed over time, I, I feel. I've been up here for a probably best part of maybe six or seven years now. And um, I just feel that uh, it's a bit, especially I've got a glass tip today. I can't haul fish up. We're using a tip where my SU, I used to wind down and like lift fish. Um, and there's a point where you can get down to and you can get the fish so far and then hand line it up if you get anything big. We did have the other rope what reached right down. So we used to be able to get down to the bottom and that. But it's very, very deep water here. Very, very tidal. You find you cast out to the right, you need seven ounces or eight ounces to hold into the middle. And um, when you get a fish on, it takes you left. Now, I was here one day. My mate Scott will uh, remember this day. We were fishing on here. 12 o'clock at night it was, pitch black. And uh, we were both on that thing. And it was the days of the old Tilly light. Now, we had the Tilly light on the um, back end of the rock there, lit up like anything. You see the boats coming past and stuff. And um, they must have thought, what's that light in, this, in the cliffs? And uh, I had a fish on this one night. And we had eels up to 20 pound that night off this mark. Of that mark there. I prefer it here because the trouble is that mark there, if the fish goes left, you get cut off slightly. Where on here, you can, because you, you're casting out to the horizon that side there, it pulls around there. When you get the fish coming in, it will come in sideways and you, you can play it a lot better. Having said that, it is very dangerous, very dangerous. But I've had blondes on here, I've had small eyes on here, I've had spotted on here, gurnards, bullets. Um, no doubt you get spurs and stuff like that. But it, it's not somewhere I'd advise to come into. Um, it's it's very dangerous and we're about to move because of it. We just haven't got the right gear here today, guys. I can't be fishing with, on this height with a glass tip, really. I mean, we had those ca first casts, didn't we, Joseph? Yeah. Um, you've, you've got a bite on now, haven't you? Yeah. So we're going to um, try and <laughs> let me get off the camera so Joseph don't lose his rod. But we'll uh, show you sort of how it is now while Joseph's reeling in. It's got loose rocks just trying to get them out of the way really but um it is as you see we've got a little rope going down here now and uh it's tight there's no other way to describe it it's tight i mean it's it's rock heights all the way down if you slip off these rocks when they're wet you're in uh, you're in very big trouble and um this is sort of how you land fish as you can see, not every mark is, uh, is, um, is comfortable. You can see how deep it is, can you? Yeah, eh? And I lost my lead. Lost your lead? Got a fish on? No. No? But, um, yeah, there he is. Lost his lead. Lost his bait as well. We're going to go to a different mark. And um, 
we're going to have a few casts there. It's been a bit of a play around game today, really. But I've enjoyed it. It's been nice to get out. You've been smashed up there, haven't you? I've got a feeling that's a dogfish, mate, or a eel. Not looking good, is it? But um, no, we'll, uh, we'll go off to the second mark now. Okay, then, like I said, guys, it's... Um, I mean, lovely deep water, but at the same time, very, very dangerous. And uh, we haven't got the right gear for this here today, to be honest. I wanted to come up and show Joseph the mark more than anything, because it's something what we'll probably fish again in the future. But at the same time, it needs to be uh, done correctly, because it can, uh, it can, it can be fatal. I mean, this isn't, this isn't the sort of place you come to just by watching a video and stuff. That's why I haven't put no like information of how to get here and stuff like that, really. It's, um, it's one of those things and one of those places which can be rewarded, but if it goes wrong, it's got consequences. And sometimes in life, fishing isn't worth risking your life for. I mean, where I am now, we used to come down some of this without ropes, not this bit here specifically, but down to the right hand side. And uh, it amazes me. I look back and think, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Just stupid. You're young and foolish. But at the same time, we live and learn. And just like this now, you've got, you've got a rope there. So you've got something to hold on to at all times. You can slip whenever. And it's just, uh, even on small banks now, I take ropes. It's just a no-brainer. Why risk it? But um, we're up now anyway. So we'll get the rope packed up and uh, head off to Mark 3. Yo, right, folks. So, bit of a windy wind. It's a uh, windy wind. I don't know what else to describe this day. Absolute nightmare. So um, we're not going to do a second production. We're going to add this on to the end of the first production because I don't think we're going to be that long here today. But um, yeah, we've, uh, we've gone to the next Mark. We ain't got the right gear for it really today, guys. And um, we didn't know we were going to come here, did we? So we're just trying to make the best of, best of our day, really. We, first cast, I had two dogfish on, as you've seen in the video. And uh, we've moved around now onto uh, an outcrop of rock. Now you're fishing in very, very deep water. I mean, very deep water. But we're probably 80 foot up in the air, which isn't fantastic. But uh, trying to get this young man to fish out for a shore league event. So then we can go home and have a bit of uh, Chinese, I'm hoping. But the wind's starting to play up a little bit. So uh, just one of them guys, You've got to try and enjoy the day and yeah, make the most of it. I mean, um, we could have done different things. It could have paid off for us today. You never know. It's all part of fishing, isn't it? Okay, folks, so Joseph has just had the last fish of the session. Um, little baby dogfish. I mean, they're really tiny up here, but uh, the wind's come on too strong. It's, it's getting too dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to call it a day, but we're going to uh, go back to the drawing board Get out again tomorrow, I think. Uh, we've got a load of crab left over, it's a good thing. Uh, we're going to get this one returned back to the fight another day. Got, you know, as far as I can get down there, I'm going to get down to. But guys, unfortunately, it's fishing, isn't it? We can't win them all the time, and uh, it's been a nice day. I know, I was a bit decided earlier, weren't you? Nothing but doggies. Nothing but doggies, but it's... Um, it just, at the end of the day, it's, it's fishing, isn't it? I mean, our plan didn't go to, go to plan at the first thing this morning. It, just, it was a nightmare. I mean, I got up an extra hour early because I was so excited. I thought to myself, you know what I mean? We've got a good chance of catching something. And um, it's just one of them, isn't it? Just, uh, it's one of those, so I haven't fit, I, don't, I haven't put a lot of time in the, up, the, up the channel for the last probably five, four, four years now. And um, it goes to show how much it's changed because like parking places and stuff like that, where I used to be able to park, is no good anymore. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, things are turning for the worst. And it, that will kill it for a lot of anglers, really, especially overnight parking and stuff like that, because you need it with night, when night fishing and stuff, and you, and you need a neat, easy access to get to the, uh, um, to the marks and stuff. But I'm going to get this baby back in a minute, and uh, we sail farewell. So uh, hopefully, guys, we'll uh, get another venture out tomorrow. So we've got a couple of productions coming your way this week. Tight lines, guys.